In May, there was a sudden explosion of Zakawi material on websites following reports that he'd been wounded in an American ambush. There were rumours his laptop had been seized, containing vital intelligence. How close have you been to capturing Musab al-Zakawi? I, I think it probably doesn't do a lot of good to say how close we were. The only thing that'll really matter is when we get him. And Zark have you almost got him? Zark Zarqawi, Bin Laden and Zawahiri, for the rest of their lives, need to keep looking over their shoulders to worry about when the knock on the door might come, because it's going to come. The beheading of the first U.S. hostage is believed to have been carried out by Zakawi himself. Sight analyzed responses on a pro-Al-Qaeda forum. Someone known only as BA-24 posted the video. In the name of Allah, the merciful and the compassionate, enclosing a link of the butchering of the first infidel America can be downloaded quickly. The effect is immediate. Allah, the Almighty, we will sacrifice ourselves for this call. It is like thunderbolts in the ears of the devils. Publish this film in all of vile America's forums and in that of his cousin Britain. Publish it in a minimum of a hundred forums. I have downloaded it and watched. What made me laugh most was the way the dirty infidel was shaking while the speech was delivered. The response was a pile of skulls. Also, videos have been posted on your website, graphic videos showing the beheading of no. civilians. No, it's not civilians, these are fighters. There's no, 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 no these were American contractors, they're civilians, they're, they're not all fighters. fighters. Well, no, they're contractors. They're working for the that's, Americans. That's the American they're, not, they're not military. They're working for there's, the military. In Islamic but law, there's no definition their heads, called military or They have military. their heads sawn off by the insurgents. Yeah. It is videoed, and that video is then posted on your website. No problem with that, because they are with the occupation forces. They you don't have, have a problem home. with that being posted on your website? No, I don't have a problem. I think the people have the right to see it, and the people who made it have the right to do it. There are people in Britain who have websites that show videos of beheading that show the suicide bombing of some of your soldiers and some of the British soldiers, and nothing is done about them. Well, I, I think it's really time that we do something about it. I, I think we all ought to be outraged by it. I don't think anyone has the right to show the taking of life of a human being just for entertainment value or for recruiting value. This March, a regular contributor to a forum known as Al Ansar died in a suicide bombing in Iraq. It was a cause for celebration. Congratulations, another member of the forum has been a martyr, the forum said, and posted his family's phone number so that other members could call in celebration. Do you believe that young British Muslims are leaving the UK and going to fight with the insurgents in Iraq? There is evidence that some, we don't know the precise numbers, could very well be very small. There is evidence that some young British men uh, have left the United Kingdom with the intention of going to Iraq. If someone is, is, is sufficiently young and sufficiently capable, he may think seriously to join them. And we know that this joining is continuously ongoing, massively. So that's, that's really one of the most massive propaganda. And you know human beings, if you see an enemy tank being blown in pieces, it gives you enormous feeling of satisfaction and also encouragement to do the same. Do you really think that a young Muslim accessing this material in an internet cafe will say, I want to go and do the same, I want to go and fight? I think so. I think so. It's very mobilizing. Internet terrorism will provide the backdrop to the trial of Andrew's friend, Baba Ahmed, if he's extradited. Martial arts were an important part of Ahmed's routine, and Andrew followed in his footsteps. It was Baba Ahmed who converted Andrew to Islam. He was very articulate with the way he, he presented Islam and what it is, what it means. Was Baba Ahmed there when you converted? Yeah, yeah, he was. He, him and his brother were, were two witnesses. Um, I remember because he came to my house, um, and, or, as he usually does, 
and uh, asked me how I felt and where I was, where I was going, where I'm, you know, where I'm at, so on and so forth. Then he, he said that, well, I, I feel you know enough to convert, but the decision obviously has to be yours. Baba Ahmed wasn't just converting young men in tooting like Andrew. It's alleged he was able to reach a much wider audience of potential jihadis via the powerful computers in his office at Imperial College. According to the American indictment, it was here that he set up his website, Azam.com, named after bin Laden's mentor, Abdullah Azam, one of the original Afghan mujahideen. It advocated fighting military jihad, a holy war against the enemies of Islam. Azam.com played the role that bin Laden had, has now designated as his own, as the inciter, as the instigator, as a site that promoted um, contact and camaraderie among younger Muslims around the world, Muslims who were most likely to adopt the, the course of jihad. Azam Publications has been set up to propagate the call for jihad among the Muslims who are sitting down ignorant of this vital duty. Thus, the purpose is to incite the believers. Muslims must use every means at their disposal to undertake military and physical training for jihad. So in my mind, Azam.com was the prototype of what Al-Qaeda has, I think, rather masterfully uh, expanded. The American indictment charges that Baba Ahmed and Azam.com were essentially one and the same, and that he used an alias to conceal his identity. Azam posted incendiary bulletins from the jihadi front lines. Although Ahmed helped run Imperial College's Islamic Society, he's not remembered as a firebrand. Was he a strong personality? I think he was a strong personality, but not in the, in a sort of, in the way that most people would recognise that term. I mean, he was always very, he, he was very articulate, but sort of always had a bit of humility around him and um, wouldn't sort of go out and wouldn't go out and make himself known. Did he ever talk about jihad? Um, he did, um, and he, he would talk about jihad in all its forms. So starting, with, you know, starting from the actual sort of expressing your um, disagreement with something that is wrong, uh, through all the way to taking uh, being involved in in, in um, war if there was an appropriate setting for that to happen. We understand Ahmed went to Bosnia in the mid-90s initially as part of a charity convoy and then to fight his jihad. To the British, this wasn't illegal. This primitive video shows how the conflict was used to encourage young British Muslims to join the jihad. In the West, many brothers, they say to us that uh, the Muslim Ummah needs doctors, they need lawyers, they need scientists, they need engineers. And I disagree with that because there is enough Muslim doctors, there is enough lawyers, scientists, engineers. But what we lack here is Muslims that are prepared to suffer and sacrifice. Azam.com's offshoot, Azam Publications, would sell such videos, shot on cheap camcorders in Bosnia, Chechnya, the West Bank and Gaza, and anywhere else Muslims were fighting jihad. For many years I followed Omar Ahmad, and many times I used to think this was someone who indeed had the same skills that I did. Evan Coleman lives and breathes computers and works as a consultant for the FBI and other US agencies. His life is spent monitoring websites, chat rooms, message boards and videos devoted to violent jihad. I followed Azam.com closer than I followed news from my own family. This, this guy really w was the leader of a small group of people who even as far back as 1996 realized the importance of the internet in terms of the larger war, a larger terrorist war around the world. Around that time, back in Tooting, Andrew and his friends started logging on to Azam.com. What effect did it have on you? Why did you access it? Azam was an English website for a start, that, that made a lot, of, uh, a lot of impact. An English website that covered a controversial issue, which is the issue of jihad. When the first set of images started coming through, 
of, of uh, you know, murdered children, murdered women, murdered men, um, it has that kind of like a shock jock effect, like, you know, wow, 